Alright guys, welcome back to Formula 1 News and a major update on the Mercedes front. A major piece of news circulating as to what their car might look like for next season. What they're going to change to their no side pod design. There will still be very slim side pods on their next year's car, the W14. But they're going to be apparently horizontal as opposed to vertical. Very much into it to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always, I'd greatly appreciate it. Got to cover some of the key stories of the last few days here because I've been able to do one for a couple of days. I'm away right now but I'll keep you guys updated as best as I possibly can because here we go. They confirmed the entire calendar Formula 1 for next season 2023. Las Vegas has been confirmed. This is the second last race of the season, the penultimate race in Las Vegas one weekend before. Can you believe it the way the FIA or the Formula 1 team structures this stuff? That it's literally a double header. Las Vegas, Abu Dhabi, the last two weekends of the season. It's a Saturday race as well here to like, oh, well, make it appeal to the time zones. This is what it looks like, right? It's a Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Australia. China apparently is back in mid-April, but um, I mean, look, we'll see if that goes ahead. They've got it pretty early, so they've got to come to a decision there relatively quickly. Azerbaijan is much earlier now than it used to be. Miami, I mean, you can see right here, there's not many breaks at all. There's the summer break, but outside of that, there's never two weekends in a row with no Formula One race. Miami, Imola, Monaco, Spain, Canada, Austria, UK, Hungary, Belgium, like obviously some great tracks in a row here in the middle of the season. Then to Monza, Singapore. So a lot of tracks here. France, of course, is gone. No more Paul Ricard. Qatar is back, US, Mexico, Brazil, Las Vegas, Abu Dhabi. So 24 races as it stands next season. A lot of, again, I mean, like, look at this stuff. We go from China to Azerbaijan, back to Miami. Like, um, I mean, then we go, okay, we do the European tour, fair enough. And then we just once again jump to Canada in the middle of it, right? So, you know, look, they did all this talk about, yeah, we're going to really be sustainable in this stuff. And then you look at the canoe, like, hang on a second, lads. We're doing all these long haul flights, which um, don't exactly seem necessary. But all the organizers there, they're own ideas, what dates they want to do, what reasons for it, certain holidays and stuff they want to coincide with. So yeah, obviously not really the message of Formula One, but they're upping the races year by year. They said they were potentially going to get to 24, 25. That is seemingly what they're going to do. But um, yeah, carbon neutral apparently by 2030, 100% sustainable fuel. But um, yeah, the double head at Las Vegas to Abu Dhabi, another absolutely vintage performance here from the Formula One team. So um, I mean, yeah, no real surprises, but still kind of frustrating. 24 races as well. Is that too many? right? There's a big talking point about this. It wasn't long ago where F1 had, what, 16 races in a season. It's gone up dramatically over the last few years. 20, 22, 20, of course, well, this season it got to, well, I guess this season was 22. Would have been next year, I thought, 23. It might be 23 if China isn't there, but they're planning for 24 and they probably want to go to 25, which is, um, you know, is that too much, right? It does mean that uh, the drivers of today maybe get more possibility to break records of those in the past, but some certainly aren't so happy about it. Also, they came to an arrangement with Monaco to stay on the calendar until 2025. Whether there was anything in that arrangement as to maybe the track layout has to be changed to some degree because there has been some talk about some alternative routes. I know Monaco's classic, it's iconic, whatever, but it's hella boring unless it rains and there's interesting uh, strategy options and, you know, failed pit stops, this type of stuff. Usually it's pretty dull. There are potentially around the streets of Monaco other routes they could go for. I wonder whether they'll consider it in future seasons, but it's going to be on the calendar for quite some time. Sonoda Alpha Tauri confirmed earlier today staying for 2023. Now Gasly we still believe is not going to be there. We think it's going to be De Vries in the Alpha Tauri and Gasly to Alpine. So Sonoda could be the team leader here. He's already been asked that question actually by the journalists. They've said okay Yuki like, are you ready to lead the team? He's like well I'm not really sure but we'll give it a go. So yeah Sonoda's going to stay. He's improved a fair bit I think this past season. Like um, he still has his moments right but I think it's good to see him back on the grid for next season no doubt about it. Now on the other side of things on the Haas front we've got this from Gunder Steiner saying that Mick Schumacher it's kind of funny he says this really I mean look, he's a kind of no-nonsense guy you've got to respect it in a way but he says look Mick Schumacher has a 50% chance of staying with Haas saying yeah you know perform well you might get it I don't believe Haas have scored points in the last like five rounds they might be the only team to have failed to do that so um, it's not looking great for Haas lately and it's not like Mick Schumacher really has that many chances because the Haas as well can happen and has happened again starts out pretty well and then falls off a cliff as the other teams start to develop right so it is what it is but as yet no decision has been made and also good designer says the fans would love it if Hulkenberg and Magnussen were to kind of reunite as teammates here at Haas like um I mean interesting statement really because Hulkenberg was an option and still is an option for Haas should they go for Hulkenberg over Schumacher I'm not so convinced personally maybe Schumacher goes to the Williams seat if that's the case but they might get Logan Sargent who knows but yeah Kevin Magnussen plus one could be Hulkenberg could be Mick Schumacher I guess those are the two options that Gundersteiner is presently considering let's talk Mercedes then right so going in
into Singapore in a, well, about a weekend's time at this point. There are plenty of questions. Will Mercedes manage to overhaul Ferrari in the constructors' standings? They've made up some ground on them over the last five rounds, and they've got six races left to try and get second in the constructors at the very least and try and get a victory as well under their belt. But they full well know, yes, they are bringing upgrades to this year's car, but really it's about next season, right? It's about building the W14, a much better car than the W13. They know where the weaknesses lie. They know where they can upgrade. And maybe Red Bull, Ferrari, they have some weaknesses to their cars, but um, you know, they don't have such clear areas where they struggle, whereas Mercedes clearly do. Now, whether they can identify exactly what to change to fix those issues, that's another question because what they could decide to do is effectively copy the Red Bull. We've seen even Aston Martin, Williams have kind of done this even earlier this season, and Haas have kind of done the same thing to Ferrari, change their car body design to make it look more like a Red Bull or like a Ferrari to gain some performance edge. Never going to really like, well, rocket you to the top of the pecking order, but for Aston Martin, it seemingly has made some impact once they understood that new concept a bit better. So that was the question that even Hamilton was raising. He was talking to the engineer saying, look guys, let's not be arrogant about this year's car design. If it's bad, let's change it, right? Let's either copy Red Bull or Ferrari, whatever we have to do. Now, of course, the problem is if you copy Red Bull or Ferrari is that you find yourself in a situation where, well, you're one year of development behind on that type of car. Like if you copy Red Bull, Red Bull are still going to be ahead of Mercedes next season because they're going to have iterated and, um, and Mercedes are going to be copying this year's design and therefore it's going to take them a while to catch up. Probably what they have to do if they really want to, you know, challenge for the constructors and the drivers championship next year is to double down to a certain degree on their own design and try and figure out its flaws and actually deal with its flaws. Now, an article comes out here a couple of days ago describing this, which is certainly positive news from a Mercedes perspective, especially the second tweet. We'll see here in a second, but is expected to be next year's car, the W14, a clear evolution of the W13, not a completely new car. So changes of the basic concept are not expected. Probably we will see a focus on the, as some are calling it, the zero pod philosophy with the very slim side pods on the side of the car, modified and focused on solving the drag problem. That's probably the key issue that Mercedes have, that their car is okay around the kind of slower speed, higher downfall circuits. Actually rather good on its tyres, the W13, probably the only car that actually could have achieved the one stop back in Zandvoort. Every other team is not quite as nice on its tyres as the Mercedes is. So that is probably the only redeeming factor of the W13 and um, it's okay at high downfall circuits but on circuits where it's power focused spa you know circuits like um, Monza of course the straight line speed just isn't where it needs to be the drag is way too high with respect to the actual well performance of the car in terms of downforce delivered right and it seems like Red Bull can get away with it massively they can well they've designed their car in such a way it's super slippery through the air and still delivers the downforce in the corners that's where they've dominated these higher speed tracks the majority of the season now a Apparently, the information that has been gathered suggests that Mercedes has managed to calibrate the wind tunnel data with the correct kind of data correlation. So this is um, remarkable, really, that Mercedes have struggled with this all season. But what their car does in the wind tunnel and does in like simulations and also does on the track have not been adding up. Right? They just can't work out what's going on. Apparently, they figured that out now and understand where the differences lie or what they exactly have to do to fix it. So that, of course, is one side of the story to get a solution. You've got to understand the problem. But now if they do understand the problem, what are they going to do to fix it. These are the rumours as to what they're planning to do. Firstly, on the suspension side, Brackley is likely to revisit the front and the rear geometries of the car on the suspension. That's been a key issue on their suspension this year with the bumps on the track that they really struggle going over bumps at all. Might come to hurt them in Singapore if they have to raise the right height of the car to deal with the bumps. Like, um, the suspension is a problem, really, to that end. Then the zero pod concept, the side pods on the car, we'll apparently see a W13 with a basic idea, sorry, W14, with a similar to the current car, but with shapes trending to the horizontal. So I think the idea is that the side pods and the kind of vents for the engine will remain very slim, but instead of being mounted vertically, they'll be mounted horizontally, which should still have the same potentially drag reducing benefits that it was meant to, and obviously didn't deliver on this car. And it'll kind of be more of a like a Red Bull mounting of the side pods, but not necessarily looking like a Red Bull. And um, apparently also some changes to the front and rear wing, like I'm having some interventions to improve aero, above all reduce drag, especially on the rear of the car. That's the the key issues they really have with their current design and, um, and that's the thing the other cars have their problems but Mercedes is very clear where they need to improve and of course it seems that they're focusing on their development doing exactly that this actually from the author of the article here saying that from his perspective what they will do is that currently the side pods are completely vertical the belly of the car kind of opening up Red Bull instead has the horizontal profile Mercedes could rotate the current profile to recover load and maintain an unloaded profile so interesting discussion really at what they might do what they will choose to do, but rumours suggesting they will keep
take this idea but reinvent it to a certain degree to get the desired result that they want and also they may have kind of discovered what that is to a certain extent in the wind tunnel testing which now apparently aligns with what their car actually does so definitely some positive signs for next year you guys can see the red bull here which is you know obviously the side pods are rather bigger here but they're kind of mounted horizontally what we might see here is mercedes go for a similar approach but these might be rather thinner than um, the, well the red bulls are for example depends what they will decide to do but that's at least one option they might well be considering but of course by now they've got to have a pretty good idea as to what their plan is with their concept now even though damon hill was kind of saying here about red bull because yes red bull might just rest on their laurels understandably but like well we've got everything locked up at this point we don't even need to develop our car anymore let's just focus on next year which might be a fair point if they do that though will ferrari and mercedes be right there by the time they get to abu dhabi they might but at the same time will mercedes ferrari also take their foot off the gas you'd probably expect them to because there's nothing really to be gained unless of course they really do fight it out tooth and nail to actually get to you know second in the constructors which might be valuable for them as well and mercedes have said yes look they are going to bring further upgrades just so they understand this car as best as they possibly can so they can bring all that knowledge into next year's design probably also implying that um, they're going to stick to this current year's concept at least to some degree and not copy the side pods of the red bull for example but definitely in twitter your thoughts on this in the comment section below one final thing to mention here just real quick on the sprint races because we saw yesterday verstappen not so happy about these apparently they still want to do six for next year but um apparently it might be three it might be six who knows i thought they'd already said it was going to be three for next year but apparently they might want to change their mind no real surprises very much in twitter your thoughts in the comment section below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you are new take care and i'll see you next time